I was born in Philly, but grew up in Delco, Delco, and to a working class family. So there was absolutely no opportunity to come home and say, I want to be an actor, a singer, and a writer. Right? The response was, oh, that's all good. You do that after work in the church. Okay? You get a job. <laughs> so I did that. I went to college. I got a job. I worked, and I worked, and I worked during the daytime, and I wrote at night. Most of it was poetry and journal entries that I stuck in a drawer because there was no time to do anything else, right? So I finally got a job where I had a couple of dollars extra, right? So didn't have to worry about the rent for, for a while. I felt good. So I decided to go to Freedom Theater and sign up for an acting class. So I go into Freedom Theater, and the recruiter says to me, so uh, what do you do for a living? And I told him, I said, I, I generate a quarter of a million dollars a year for my company as a salesperson. And the recruiter said, wait just a minute. I'll be right back. And he comes back five minutes later with the co-founder of Freedom Theater, right? And we sit down and we're talking about the theater and, and what I do for a living. And that was Friday. Sunday morning, I get a phone call from, from the co-founder saying, I want you to work for us. And I took that job. Okay. So Freedom Theater was the first time I had ever seen black people making a living in the theater. Right? these incredible artists making work. But I kind of watched it from the sidelines because I was the fundraiser, right? I was the administrative person. And at one point I asked Walter Dallas, I don't know how many of y'all remember Walter Dallas, right? I asked to be transferred into the theater department and was told, we can't do it. You're too valuable as a fundraiser, right? So. This play started rattling around in my head. Remember, I'm writing all night. And it wasn't like anything else I had ever written before. It wasn't a linear play. It wasn't naturalistic. It was metaphysical. It was surreal. None of these terms I knew at the time, right? And I knew that I could not get these characters out of my head and onto the page without some more training. So I set out to find a graduate school, and I found Sarah Lawrence College. So they have an MFA program, right? No scholarships, no teaching artist jobs. You write a $60,000 check for two years, and that's it, and you go to class, right? So I went back to FSA for student loans, <laughs> and I went to Sarah Lawrence, and I spent a lot of time working on getting this play out of my head, you know, working two years, the majority of the last year doing it. Now, Sarah Lawrence, they don't do tests, and they don't even give you your grades. You have to actually request your grades. You demonstrate knowledge through academic papers and work. There was no thesis either. You had to submit a portfolio. And mine was about this big. And you had to present it to a committee. So we're all seated outside the chairman of the department's office with our portfolios in our laps. First person goes in. 30 minutes, the door flies open, they rush out with tears running all down their face, right past all of us. And I'm next, <laughs> right? Because I'm a B, I'm next, right? So I go in, I go in, and B was for Brunson people. <laughs> So I go in with my portfolio, and my playwriting teacher is there, so I'm feeling good, right? And they say, okay, Jamie, you're acting really good. You're singing. You made a lot of progress. This play you submitted, it's uh, full of exposition and not enough dramatic action. My heart sank. And I said, so much so that I said, can you excuse me for a minute? I need to go to the ladies' room. And I went into the restroom choking back tears. 
And, you know, because I felt like I'm here in a graduate program. I've been working with my teacher. Why wasn't I prepared to have a play that is ready for production? You see, because to me, that master's of fine art degree was the first step in launching my Broadway career. So what was going on? So I went back and they said to me, would you be willing to do a little bit more work on this play? And I said, of course I will. I'm here to be great. And right. And after a while, I finished the work on it and they presented my play along with some other selected student work at a student showcase in Manhattan. Now, the funny thing is, and I'm rounding to an end, is while I was at Sarah Lawrence, I came in contact with a poet, an Austrian poet named Rainier Maria Rilke. Okay. And he wrote in the late 1890s and early 1900s. And he wrote this book called Letters to a Young Poet, where this young poet had literally sent Rilke his verses and asked Rilke to read them and tell him if he was any good. And I'm going to paraphrase what Rilke said to him back. Rilke said, you send me and other people your work and then are troubled when they reject you. He said, I'm encouraging you not to seek validation from others. He said, look inward. Examine the motivation for why you have to write. See if those roots deep down into your soul, into your heart, and if in the quietest hour of your night, you respond, I must write, then build your entire life around that reality. You see, having a master's in fine art did not make me a master. Rather, it provided me with the foundational knowledge to pursue mastery, which is a noble, lifelong pursuit. Thank you. Yeah.